Let's head straight into it. Welcome back, everyone, to Urban Jungle. I'm Griffin, your host. Our game here is one of Noir Intrigue, Deception, and Grand Theft Auto, taking place in the year 1923 in a city called Chicago, a place full of gangsters, magicians, and populated by animal people. Here, playing some of those people today, uh, I will allow them to introduce themselves, starting with Theta. Who are you playing? I'm playing Dante, the original famous sloth magician. Uh, my personality is material, and my motto is I always have a plan. I Excellent. currently only have one goal, to take care of the entity once and for all. Ah, uh, yes, we're going to have to settle up on some goals here in a little bit. I'll offer one up at the end. Uh, Zamek. Hello. Like I am a cat person. My motto is the sun will come out tomorrow. And, um... Trying to remember what my goals were because I think uh, some of my goals changed. I think I'm also pledged to stop the entity from doing whatever it wants to do. <laughs> Hold on. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, then. Follow that up with Rafferty. Who are you playing today? Hello, I am playing Claudia Greathouse, aka The Woman in Black. Uh, she is a rich fox masked vigilante. Her motto is justice tempered by mercy. And I also have accomplished my long-term goal of freeing the mysterious breakstone, but I have a feeling that we've only seen the tip of this iceberg. Yes, I believe you uh, are out of goals then at the moment, right? That is correct. I will make sure to assign one then. Uh, and last but not least, EHH, who are you playing today? Uh, I'm playing James Green, a deer knight debunker. Uh, my personality is skeptical, and my motto is, there's got to be logical explanation. My goal is to prove the supernatural event is either true or, false, uh, true or false, and make my name for and make my name for myself as, as a debunker. All right. Make a name for yourself, proving the supernatural, all good things. Uh, so to start off, to explain where we were last time, uh, I believe I will actually assign that to someone else today. <laughs> uh, Theta, give us a little bit of what happened last time. Uh, we figured out where William Breakstone was. Somebody forgot to give a do uh, sock to Dobby. Uh, we broke into a place and got William Breakstone back. All right. Uh, so I suppose to attend them to that. Uh on rescuing William Breakstone. Uh, he was thankful and glad to see Claudia once again, but explained that they would undoubtedly come and get revenge uh, for this. Specifically, they may come to Claudia's home to destroy her for his uh, for betraying them. They had had set up the contingency all along, is why he did not want to involve you. Uh, but now I will go ahead and offer to the party as a whole to make sure William is safe. Right. My my goal was to sequester him with Dante because mm -hmm. if anyone knows how to hide anyone. And also, I'm, I'm also trying to figure out how they would exact revenge against me because I was in disguise. But... Uh, as William has said, he had... He had disclosed that he knew you and cared about you, and that is why they are choosing to target you to get to him emotionally. Well, maybe they'll underestimate punish him by punishing everyone around him. Um, great. Well, he doesn't actually mention me in his journal, though. Well, we'll see what happens. He he did briefly at the end of it. Um, we'll we'll see what happens. In any event, I'm not storing him at my house. Uh, very true. They are at a, another location, and we will go ahead and begin there at the downtown loft of Dante's. Oh, I see. How? Quick thing with the sheet. I'm not sure why that happened right there with the uh, 11d8. Nope. Still does the so... 11d8, and I still just have it set to mark one. Let me see if I put it to zero what happens this time around. Nope. Doesn't roll it at all. Uh, I set this one over here to roll one one d six, and it rolled it properly. I have it set to roll one d four. Nope, and now it's doing eleven d eight, which is really weird. Yes, that is very strange. So while some of them were fixed, uh, 
I guess Hold it is something that yep. might be across the board at random intervals. That's it. That's it. Because I just changed it to. So apparently, if whoever fixed it, they only fixed it for D6s, but the other dices are still suffering from the. Uh, uh, I will suggest we experiment with it later, or at least I intend to. All right. But we will go ahead and uh, zoom in on Zamek, William Breakstone, and the elusive Regina Moon. The room is quiet. Regina quietly sips away on her moonshine while reclining in Dante's chair, relaxed but observing William. William, meanwhile, has not managed to stay still for a while now and is pacing the room and only occasionally stopping to stare out the window onto the street. <clears throat> Uh, William will go ahead and uh, place his hands up on the window sill and begin speaking out loud to himself. I, I, I can't stop thinking about how I've failed everybody. The city, Claudia, my friends. Maybe if I, I could have taught them more patience or more caution. They... They were never academically as inclined as I was. It's it's clear now they were never interested for the same reasons that I was at the start. Regina well, I look, I, I, sort I of look smirks like... first, though, and says, uh, Yes, what a shame. They couldn't all be rich boys like yourself. Clearly, they're to blame for having more than curiosity at stake. And I just look over to him, and I'm like, You do have a lot to make up for. And I'm just quietly staring. I'm just quietly looking at him from the corner. He sort of crosses his arms a little bit. It's like, well, I'm glad I know I have both of your condemnation then. It's it's not as if I I didn't care or didn't try. I, I, I did what I could to make sure they weren't left down the cold and were taken care of. Uh but to which Regina says, like, oh, what a charity to live on another's coattails. I've kept a watch in my mind's eye. Your friends were soldiers, were they not? On returning, they lacked funds and homes of their own, yes. But they lacked purpose as well. You gave them all something to fill the void. Something very dark and dangerous you had yet to realize. William is slightly taken aback and asked, well, e e even if you could see them, how, how could you know all that? To which Regina slowly responds, I had students of my own once. It was not the first time a war had abandoned its soldiers. Men went to fight in the Civil War, and when they returned, had little to latch on to. Few ever imagined being displaced from their home, physically or emotionally. Like them, your friends may have never truly returned home, and in living with sour grapes or seizing it with new power. Uh, oh, I skipped a whole sentence. Uh, never truly returned home, but by now perhaps they harbor uh, the same sentiment to have fought what they can never really have again in their hearts. Given the choice between living with their sour grapes or seizing with new power, I think one is more appealing to a man still at war. I stand up angrily and I'm like, that's just a load of malarkey. He reaped what he sowed, him and all the people that he went to war with. And I just storm out the room. Yeah, on the way out, of course, you hear... Uh, William, also equally frustrated, look at Regina and it's like, well, what, what would you have done then? What did you do for your students? And as you storm out, you can only hear, I watched them die. We are both failures. So where are you going, Zamek? I'm just going outside to get some fresh air because he's really messing with my Zen thing right now. <laughs> so I'm just trying to attach deep breath because I know we kind of need him, but at the same time, I kind of want to like put him in a quiet room somewhere and throttle him for a few minutes. Of course. Uh, but nonetheless, he is uh, shortly behind you as he comes out for some air. And you can see him like reaching into his pocket for a pack of cigarettes and 
fretting with a match. And you can just see his hands shaking. I look over to him and I'm like, uh, something on your mind? Something. Something? <laughs> yes, something. This whole damn thing. I'm just sitting here. Claudia's going to die. And he just reaches out to you and shakes your shoulders. What am I doing here? You know, that's very interesting because I've been asking that same thing ever since you've walked in this building. I go, part of me wants to leave you to your fate because, and I look at him very carefully because you're probably one of the few people that actually do deserve it. He goes, but unfortunately, that's not how the world works. So we're stuck together. But I'm going to be completely frank with you, dude. He goes, you remember that village and that person who did that magic trick you could never figure out what he did? I, and I, I, grab him, I grab him by his shirt and I pull him real close to me and I'm like, that was yeah, my village. His expression is slowly opening wider and wider. He goes, that's my village. And he was my teacher. And you killed him. You and all your friends. So you got a lot to make up for. And I don't think you'll ever be able to get my forgiveness. And I and I I reach down, I grab this, I grab the matches, I light, I light one up, and I hold it up to his <laughs> to his cigarette. <laughs> he very, very nervously puffs on it. And he seems quiet for a bit. Starts and looking I, more and more down and avoiding your gaze. And I flick the cigarette off into the distance and I go. Yeah, I guess now we're all out of our comfort zones now. And I walk back inside. Uh, is there anything you plan to do? Regina is still inside as well, of course. And she's still sipping away. I guess I go back in the room. I grab, I grab myself a drink. And I sit back on the window. And I'm just looking at William through the window. Nervous she'll she'll wait for you to bring a glass over, and she will pour you out a nice, healthy portion. And I'm like, thank you. Anytime, sweetheart. And he goes, ah, you know what? I got to get out of here. I got to leave. This is getting too much for me. Um, Just where do you think you'll go? I don't know. Somewhere. Anywhere. I just can't. I, I'm like, I'm like, I gulp the drink down, and I'm like, I need to blow off some steam. And uh, well, if you need it, to, I'm certain your friend will need help. I can keep an eye on Breakstone. He won't evade my sight. Yeah, uh, and I look over. I won't at let him do I'm anything like, stupid either. I'm like, yeah, keep a uh, keep a keep that one on a short leash. Well, I know how to keep boys in check. And she grins. An old person who's seen too much kind of grin. And I Go just on. smile. I got to smile. I go, thank you. And uh, I just, uh, I put the glass down and I walk out. Get in my truck. And I guess I'm going to go go to my little special place and uh, go visit my adoptive grandma. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and decide on the name for uh, Grandma real quick here, then. Um, let's see, let's see. Close friends. Old also, farm woman. who the hell is this? Uh, someone who has not been seen before, but is a friend he goes to to relax. Um, Secret from me, I guess. On a farm guess. slightly outside of Chicago, a nice, quiet, natural place, and a gentle old woman. Um... Um, we'll call her Louise. Louise. Yes, Louise. The old farm woman. And it is now in the journal. Bam. And so, and so, yeah, I just go over there to take care of her and listen to her stories and, like, do the housework. Kind of like the kind of thing I would have done for my grandma if she was still alive. Of course. And she's oh so happy to have you here. Oh, it's so nice to have a nice strong lad around the house again. Oh, but you seem you seem a little frustrated today. Is everything and, uh, all right? Uh, just found out something that I wasn't sure I was ever going to find out, and uh, kind of put me in an awkward position. 
So I kind of need a moment. I need to kind of need to make a moment to take stock in it. Well, I do hope you're all right. Oh, I'm alive. I don't know about all right, but uh, yeah, some interesting things have happened. I've uh, I've met some uh, interesting people, and have been involved in quite a few adventures. Way more than I had any plan on being. And then I go, but don't worry about me. You know, let me go and fix that uh that picket fence for you, and uh, you just sit right here, and I'll make sure that the trash gets taken out. <laughs> Oh, oh, thank you so much. Uh, and so, and yeah, as you're like about there. to like leave out the door, you know, like with a, a nice fresh paint bucket in your hand, she just says, uh, it's, it's okay if you need anyone to talk about whomever you lost. As if she had seen straight through you. And uh, I stop at the doorway and I don't look back and I go, I go, some things are just too painful to bring up. I goes, it just creates too many clouds in the sky, and I just rather prefer a sunny day. And I go outside yeah, and I enjoy the afternoon. eventually, dear. There you go. I knew someone who told me that you could keep the rain away as long as you like. And I go outside and enjoy the afternoon painting. The fence. Indeed. You enjoy the nice setting evening sun outside. Uh, and we will transition uh, shortly over to Zamek, who is enjoying his evening inside. Let's see, let's see. But we just left Zamek. Just gotta clear my throat a little bit. Uh, you get out of the cab with Sal, Dante, uh, avoiding the cracks in the pavement as you head up to the Eastwood Library. There's actually a fair amount of buzz inside. One wing of the library is packed with a small crowd of people. It's easy to spot out the different roles of everyone uh, who's taking their seats. You see, of course, uh, magicians wearing their fine suits uh, who work as main performers. Workmen like Sal wearing clean pressed shirts, uh, but little in the way of finery who usually build the props or take care of the stage. And an assortment of other assistants in between. Actors, talented acrobats, and apprenticing magicians who perform alongside their tutors. Uh, inside, of course, uh, you see them accumulating towards one wing of the library. Uh, and among the seats up front is, of course, Piator, the Magician of Kings, a fine rat alongside a beautiful vixen assistant of his. Up front as well is someone you recognize as Threston, uh, the wolf who performs the wonder show of the stars brought straight to Earth. And beside him is a bulky-looking boar whom you recognize as being his pyrotechnics expert, and even now smells a little bit faintly of gunpowder. And finally, at the front are three empty seats for you, Sal, and Zamek. Uh, while you haven't been in town long enough to really fully capture the public side, the Union has more or less recognized you have a certain unique skill and are happy to have you among them. <clears throat> uh, I presume you take your seat? Yeah, I don't know why I wouldn't. Okay. No Always want to out. engage Pytor. <laughs> Wait, say that again? I said I have no want to engage Pytor. Indeed, and he seems more than happy to uh, continue speaking to his assistant for the time being. Uh, the room uh, quiets a little bit as a shabby-looking gecko takes the main podium, and you recognize him as Clarence the Seer, fortune teller and street magician, and the man who keeps the union organized. Uh, the gecko uh, straightens up his suit and tie, uh, stands up at the podium and says, thank you all for coming to another meeting of our Society of American Magicians. Uh, minutes from last week are available on the desk here, and minutes for tonight will be available by the next meeting as well, courtesy of Miss Olson, uh, the librarian here. He says as he waves all the way down the library to the central kiosk. Oh, while well, I don't see any brand new faces here tonight, uh, our latest member, Dante, had his opening act just last week over at the Sade Lake Theater, 
Let's all give him a round of applause. And the room will politely applaud for you. And Clarence will motion for you and Sal to stand for a moment for it. Right. Give uh, a bow. Tip the hat. A full-grown rabbit man falls out. <laughs> ah, how do you stuff that in there? Ah, no. Uh, but he'll uh, wait for the applause to sort of quietly die down and say, I hear your performance went well. Uh, anything you'd like to say for yourself right now, Dante? No. Very well. Well, if we'll go ahead and take a look at the minutes here. Uh, and he will begin going on a little bit about a few bits of union business. Uh, about where the uh, union fees go to, how uh, collectively everyone can bargain for uh, renting out theater space for their performances, and how to better schedule themselves to not overlap and uh, take away crowds from each other so that everyone can get a chance to perform and get a good crowd. Uh, so I have to ask, um, what's going through your mind, and do you uh, come up with your own motion when the floor is open for people to uh, speak or bring up their own issues? Well, I mean, I'd, I'd pay attention to see if they're, what the current schedule of uh, acts are, so that I don't overlap with my own upcoming mm -hmm. shows. Right, of course. Uh, the schedule is pretty clearly laid out, and uh, you being one of the more talented performers in town by far, uh, generally actually have a secured spot. Uh, and Pietor and Threston are certain to not overlap you. Well, I mean, what's Pietor even doing here? Hmm? I've seen... Oh, I've... Yeah. I've been in the city for a few months now. It's a nice place to set up an act, and not enough people have seen it yet. I mean, that's my internal question. If he's asked, if he's answering somebody else right now, preferably. Uh, well, I'm going to presume that at some point you did ask the information, or at least got a response at some point. It's not secret information. With enough talking to people, you generally get it, and you talk to enough people. Right, but we're all magicians in here, right? So at best, maybe I send Sal over. Because I'm not going to get into a I'm not going to get into a conversation with a mentalist. Uh, of course, of course. Cold reading me and shit. No, I'm going to pass on that uncomfortable scenario. Right. But at least the attitude here at the Union is not unfriendly, and neither is uh, Piator or Thresten, honestly. Uh, though they might have uh, opinions about their fame. But otherwise, they, they're approachable in this scenario. You're a peer, after all. Right, but he's also the one that would drive me away from national fame. In the history of <laughs> stateside magicians, uh, he would be the one who would be like, uh, if you give this guy a venue, I will never operate in your venue again, in which case I no longer get venues because they consider him to be the the larger of the two of us. Which case, we might be peers, but we're not friendly. Right, of course. Thruston, of course, uh, during conversation, will uh, come by and like uh, give you a little uh, prod in the ribs and suggest, well, you know, if you're... <laughs> That's how Houdini smart. died, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Oh, my mistake, he says, he rolls his eyes. But if you're concerned, maybe uh, we could have a month of dual performances? You know, I think it would, uh, I think it would help out. It'd bring attention to a lot of the lesser magicians out there. And of course, you could sell it to the public as a competition. Wait, are you still doing um, pyrotechnic work? Oh, oh, yes, of course. Fire and electricity are all part of the act. And how's the accident record going? Uh, say that again? How's the accident record going? Well, so far I haven't burned down this theater. Which one's this theater? 
<laughs> we are currently in a library, you know this, right? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't have a name prepared for it, unfortunately, but his theater. It's like, well, you know, we've, you've kept the fires down, and we make sure to have proper safety procedures. And that's part of what the, the union here is for, after all. Make sure that everyone's doing things safely. No one... No one does anything too dangerous. And you would say that you're... It'd be a you're, shame if anyone died doing an act. You're uh, pulling in... What size crowd would you say? Well, I've been here for a bit longer than you. I think I got a sizable and steady audience. But I hear from your last performance it was uh, a nice children's show, wasn't it? And he smirks just a little bit. Uh, what is with that face? Do you... Do you not know how commerce works? Children don't often pay their own way. A children's show means I'm pulling in an entire family. That's sometimes three to four times the amount that you've been pulling in. I do love your positive attitude, Dante. If nothing else. It is a business yeah, acumen I... that I feel like you're failing at. And I and I speak up from behind Dante because I've snuck into the meeting and I'm like, you know what I think? I You're think painting you a fence, a... you son of a bitch. Get back to making an act. I finished painting. <laughs> you better get your ass back in that theater. If I see you sneaking in, I am going to kick your ass with this cane. Get the it's fuck right, back to the, the theater. Zavik does his fence and has arrived uh, rather late and <laughs> inconspicuously. I am serious. We're going to have a scene here where I'm raising a cane at you, <laughs> yelling at you in the middle of this thing to get back to the fucking stage and get the act made that you have been spending a whole week slacking off. All right. Damn. Calm down. I thought you wanted me to go to this thing. Jeez. <laughs> What got your oh. top in a tizzy? Oh, sounds like you're a little short on ideas today, aren't you, Dante? No, I have an entire playbook. What, do you not? I'd assume you would if you haven't burned down the 15th theater. Well, it sounds like if you need a little bit of inspiration to get you going... I do not I need... I do not need inspiration. I do not need ideas from you. I am trying to make Zamek into a magician in his own right. He seems to be fighting me on this. This is all. Ah, oh, well, it seems like you have your own business. I think I'm going to propose my own motion, though. And he will actually uh, go ahead and try speaking at length to try to get people in on his uh, own particular idea tonight. Uh, leaving you to your business. I literally have no business. I was going to propose yeah. something to him, and then Sonic freaked me out. Well, it's not like he's left. Yeah, but he now he's proposing a motion. It. Yeah, so which means now I have to listen to what his motion is. Uh, well, and, I'll, and, I'll, and, I'll the, and I'll head back to the. And I'll head back to the theater and start fixing the equipment for the next show. <laughs> All right. Pointedly, perfect. not coming up with an act. Uh, and uh, he, uh, as I said before, he goes through his uh, the proposal he even laid out to you that uh, maybe everyone could work together for a set of dual performances to make sure uh, everyone's name gets out properly. And he'd be more than happy to have a uh, few of the other magicians come along to his show uh, and show off alongside of him. Uh, and people sort of nod and generally agree to the concept. It it would maybe help get other people's names out who aren't quite so well known as he. Uh, Pietur is slightly taken aback, though. It's like, my act is my own, and I will not be showing that off to anyone backstage. Uh, and ultimately, uh, between the two, they have their own supposedly factions, or at least fans among the other magicians, who listen to them and agree with them, but the room is fairly split. Uh, you might be able to weigh your voice in on if or if not this is a good idea. Well, again, the thing that is Piotr is having a name that's somebody else's, I mean, disregarding the fact, I'm basing my opinion on him on the Magician of Kings thing, which is the tagline of another magician, 
who was yeah. very much an asshole <laughs> because <laughs> he would, you know, if you wanted to play a venue that was his, threaten the venue to take his act elsewhere, which was bad decision for them business-wise, so they would mm -hmm. kick other magicians out. Whereas this society is based around progressing new and upcoming magicians. So, Fyotor is a fucking asshole in this scenario. So, <laughs> which is why I will have nothing to do He's with him. He's here for the little guys, though. He's not. Especially you. The only reason I can imagine he's here is to make sure that the competition is still competition. Anyway, the only reason I wanted to talk to... Shit, I forgot to name all of a sudden. Uh, Thurston. Which, by the way, <laughs> on the nose. Uh, oh, sorry, Thurston, not Thurston. Yeah. I know, I, I, I modified the name. <laughs> Thurston, the wonder magician. Um... Yeah. Uh, the uh, dual show idea that you have proposed, I believe we could modify that if you'd be willing to work at my stage opposite of me uh, as I believe that we shouldn't uh, dual show, but we should put on a dual show if you catch my drift. Oh! Well, that sounds fantastic, honestly. What exactly do you have in mind? Having the audience vote who's the best? No, 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 no. Not to like two shows that happen at the same time. I mean to like two magicians that duel. Are you familiar with dueling banjos? <laughs> he gives a chuckle to this. Ah, yes, I am. I see what you mean. Sounds like a bit of an intricate act to pull off, but... I think you're clever enough to do that. Alright, so long as we can assure mutual safety, we can propose our own uh, tricks to act back and forth against one another. What is your safety record like again? Beyond the not having burned down a stage in seven days? Uh, to that, his uh, boorish assistant will uh, gruff up. His arms have been perpetually crossed for about the last hour. As he uh, looks over at you, it's like, I guarantee you I don't let a single person get hurt on my watch. Either I get burned or nobody does, and that's it. And I assure you my work is top-notch. Sir, sir, you can talk to Sal. Sal can arrange things with you. Sal just gives a slight little a nervous wave, of course. And But the crowd generally seems to now be on top of Thurston, uh, Thurston's idea. Uh, that maybe uh, there should be some coordination among everyone to get some extra shows in with each other. And, of course, they will take their lead upon seeing how your idea pans out. Sure, I would also uh, propose, again, this is not me to Sorry, I don't know why I'm continuing accent the out of character part. This is not me addressing the entire crowd. This is me atta uh, attacking. <laughs> this is me addressing the rest in. Uh, yeah. And, of course, I should uh, say that we should probably do two different shows. One at your theater, one at my theater. Uh... And, of course, the shows should be different. Uh, in my theater, of course, I will win. In your theater, of course, you will win. It's only right. He, uh, he smiles and nods. Of course, we have to make sure everyone gets the proper amount of uh, showtime, spectacle, and uh, new and interested fans. Well, right, of course, because people going to your theater, of course, are going to want to see you win. It will be... I will not wean any new fans for having w beaten you in your own home turf, as it were, and the same vice versa, but if I do a good show and they see that you've won and you're like, hey, this guy is good, and the same for my fans to me to you, there might be some crossover there. All right, so Theta, I'm going to ask you to sort of write down this specific information just so that I can gather it up later, if that's all right. <clears throat> I quite literally have no specific information. Everything I just said out well, loud I mean, you've was already it. You specifically stated like the sort of things that she wants, uh, but I'm going to need to take notes. But that's a lot for me to write down because I'm just going to continue talking here. 
Um, uh, but Clarence sort of starts to try to take control of the dialogue and uh, organize people and see, like, yes, we'll we'll see how this works out. Perhaps we can get people into groups, uh, most beneficial pairs. Uh, and the conversation begins to narrow to that. As, of course, the uh, meeting comes more and more to an end where a few people start to filter out. Um, Zomig, you went back to the theater. And uh, mm -hmm. you... You've been back for a little while. You, what have you been doing? Well, I, I, you know, I was cognizant of the fact that I've been a pretty crappy employee and assistant a couple of weeks. So I'm in the backstage preparing all the, uh, the whatever the, the equipment for the next show, tidying up, doing whatever assistants do. All right. Uh. I'd like you to go ahead and make an observation roll, mind observation, while you go ahead and busy yourself. Just mind observation? Uh, yes. All right, not big. You you sort of hear a car pulling up to the side of the theater, but that's about all. There's no show tonight, though. Okay, so I just put it in my head, like, hmm, I wonder who just pulled up. And I'm, I'm going to assume that it's probably Dante because the meeting's over. Right, you, you wait a minute, but you don't hear anyone enter the theater. Okay, so now I'm getting curious. So I guess I'll, I'll put down whatever I'm putting down and then uh, walk over to the entrance. All right, you head out to the entrance and... Uh... You open up the door to kind of peek outside to see what's happening, and you see uh, a car is uh, has pulled up next to the sidewalk. Uh, but it's empty and idling. There's not even a driver in the driver's side? Correct. There's no driver in there right now. Hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to walk outside and cross the street and look at the theater from across the street from a vantage point. All right, point. go ahead and give me another mind observation roll. <laughs> All right, you go ahead and cross the street to give yourself a much better vantage point, and you can see that there's a couple of people up on top of the roof of the theater now. By the looks of it, it seems like they may have gotten up via the fire escape on the side. Okay, I go over to I go over to my truck, which I assume still has the the fireplace poker that I stole from Blakestone's mansion. Yeah, and I pick it up, and I uh, and then I'll sneak up the fire escape and see if I can, like, kind of creep in on what they're doing on the roof. All right, I'd like you to go ahead and give me a a dexter not dexterity a speed evasion check. As you will be sneaking up there. And of course, if you have stealth, you can roll that as well. And I am reasonably certain I can take a look at this. Ah, your evasion. We have... Very good. <clears throat> I'm going to ask, uh, are you going to go all the way up onto the roof? No, no, no. I'm going to climb all the way up to the, I guess, the edge where you get onto the roof, and then I'm going to listen in and see if they're talking, if there's movement. Yeah, so you're going to take cover just behind there, then. Yes. All right. So you hear a, uh, a couple of voices. And you hear the sound of uh, metal on wood as someone is trying to uh, mess with the rooftop access door. And you hear one of them say, it's like, could you hurry up? It's freezing up here. Like, shut up. We just got to drop this off inside and get out. And the door is not cooperating. And, uh, and you I'll put your back into it. I, and I'll stand up because I'm assuming they're all obviously staring at the door and I'll be like, mm -hmm. uh, maybe if you had the key, it would be a lot easier. Before they turn around, though, um, 
how does this work? Because I have a spell that supposedly protects me from all bodily harm. Uh, what you would do is you would make a roll in that uh, for that bit of magic. And then if you get enough successes, you might be able to pull it off. Right, so is and that a presence? if you don't, then it kind of nothing happens, really. Okay, so that's a presence roll? Uh, what are you what are you using exactly? Your spiritualism? Yes. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up real quick uh, for my own benefit as well. Here we go. I'll copy the the ritual that I'm talking about. Oh, oh, you're doing the ritual, right? So that's an academics check. It would be mind, will, academics, and your power die. Okay, so what was that again? Mind, uh, will, academics, and your power dice. All right, so I wonder if this works. Put a D12 in here. So it's a mind, will, academics, right? Correct. And that one works too. So apparently it's just the 1D4 that's broken. Huh, yeah, that's really weird. Because I, I, will... I just used D12. <laughs> did, you, worked, so I... did you copy that right? What do you mean? It works to make the dreamer vulnerable to mundane weapons. Uh, it might have just because it's supposedly not it invulnerable, vulnerable. but vulnerable. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm just wondering: is that the right word? I'm assuming vulnerable is, invul is in fact the correct word. I will tell is you. It this. Is it vulnerable? I thought it was invulnerable. What's the point vulnerable. of having something? That why would that... <laughs> well, maybe you're fighting someone that seems to be invulnerable. Well, then you have the answer to it. The dreamer here is a specific proper noun. So wait, what? how does this work? Now I'm a little bit confused. I thought it was sort of like... It does nothing to you. It does it... nothing to me. Okay. If you recall, the dreamer from last time was an ephemeral spirit who probably could not have been affected by mortal weapons. Oh, right. Ah. This would actually make it vulnerable so we could earn it. Gotcha. Okay, I see what you're saying. I thought this was something like generically I could use. Okay. It well, does have I... specific applications. Though, uh, you haven't experimented yet. You don't know if it could affect other things. Hold on, I'll cast this on you. Blam, blam. Ah, it made you vulnerable to weapons. Just like this. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? That's an interesting idea. Let me try that. Could I use this to make them vulnerable to my poker more effectively? I want to use that. You, you Thank can you, certainly Rafferty. try to pull it off, but you are trying to cast a ritual in haste here, assuming you don't want to like spend five minutes on it, right? Or do you uh, spend five minutes like hiding behind and see how far they get first? Yes. Let's do that. Uh, I want to give you uh, Which one? The, the wait five minutes. Actually, I will say, like, as I was sneaking up the fire escape, that's what I was doing. So, like, it won't be five minutes. Probably be, like, two or three minutes before I finish. Okay. So, we can roll with that. You're kind of uh, working the magic under your breath here. Uh, you got one success out of the bunch, and you got a one as well. Oof. <clears throat> <laughs> what does that mean? I didn't do it. Uh, well, you do successfully finish your ritual off, and you're certain that it did, but your bad luck will proc. Which one was your power die? The oh, D12. I think he... Did you have a D12? I can't remember. Yeah. It was D12. Oh, okay. Because you remember... I realized I boosted it that far. That's cool. Yeah, they all have power dice, so it's the one you really got to keep track of, if it rolls a one or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's just two. Uh, but yes, uh, so your specific ability, bad luck procs, you will get the charge on it, you can spend it later. But you did while casting spell and bad stuff's about to happen as the three of you crumple to the floor unconscious. Everything goes black for you, Zomic. Oh, I collapse to the floor? Yes. All right, what do I and wake up to? That moment of tension. Uh, we will go ahead and shift over to another tense scene. Uh, wherein 
Claudia and James Green. The two of you have been left in the mansion, and there is a small pile of books at your disposal and a looming feeling of dread. Uh, William did make it clear the cult would be coming for you to take its revenge here. What are you two doing to prepare? Uh, Rafferty and EHH. I'm still in disbelief that they would come after me first. But, um, and they don't even know James. So, uh, you know, James, this isn't your fight. If you don't want to be killed by supernatural cultists, uh, you don't actually have to hang around. I can see by your silence that you agree. By uh, the four deer in headlights here. EHH, you good? Uh, all right. So I suppose it's up to Claudia right now, who's probably more inclined to this situation anyway, considering it is, in fact, your house. Well, I've been thinking about this, and there's no way that the cult, even though the cult might come after me, there's no way that they know that I know they would come after me. So I'm going to have to make a call to the private investigator agency. Uh, we need to find somebody who vaguely looks like me. Yeah, uh, your detective picks up. Let me see what his name was again. I got it up here. He is... Uh, not I think I have it in my notes. Is uh, EHH having uh, connection trouble? Uh, hello, is this working? Hey, oh, there you go. Now. Yeah, uh, I was having, yeah, I was, yeah, yeah, I was going in and out and in and out and in and out throughout the whole... Oh, dear. Well, it, it is at least uh, you're up now. Uh, you are at Claudia's uh, Great House Estate, and there's a looming feeling of dread that cultists will be coming here. Yeah, and I was just suggesting that, James, if you don't want to hang around because there's a, you know, a contract out for my death, I can completely sympathize with that. That is understandable, and I, I just want to do research on these books and not fight. Well, you're welcome to research them here in my library. Uh, I will instruct the staff to give you anything you need. There is, in fact, a nice library uh, over here in the back. Uh, I'll take the book. I'll take the book. There's also a private study and a group study. You keep and getting cut off. The lounge in the parlor and the den. Right. James keeps getting cut off. Are you staying or are you leaving? Uh, uh, it. Hmm. I'm just thinking about where if I should take the books, if I should leave and take the books with me, or or staying is a better option. Well, while you're going to consider that, uh, I'm going to let's see. No, Snow and Sons of the Lawyers. I don't think I wrote down the name of the clipping agent or the. Uh, I I have him here. It took me a second to just find him on the list again. That's Let me all. write that down. That's my bad. <laughs> he is. Uh, I will press it here. Shutter players, Alton Daher. Dear detective, who runs the Daher Private Investigation Company, and he works for Claudia most right. of the time. Well, um, for reasons I don't care to disclose, I would like them to hire somebody to impersonate me and to wander around town. He, you hear sort of silence on the other side for a second, and you hear what is undoubtedly the drag of a cigarette in a private investigator's office. So you're telling me you need a double. Is this double going to be in any danger? You know, uh, I, I have to pause a moment and think, no, I, 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 I am in, at the core of my being. It's always about justice. Yes, I fear that there uh, someone has recently say, uh, made some heated discussion. Oh, I have good news. Uh, I have located William Breakstone. We can take him off the clipping service list. Oh, amazing. I'm still expecting the check for that, but uh, um, I'm glad he's safe. The I will happily send it by post service. Check is in the mail. And actually, you forget I have a retainer, so never mind. Um, <laughs> but yeah, most importantly, for you somewhere. there's been uh, Mr. Breakstone is concerned that there will be people who, for some reason, will take violence against me. Uh, 
I have decided that that to take this threat seriously. So yes, this person might actually be in danger, but I'm sure that you and your skilled members of union busting or whatever it is that you do uh, could find someone who could be suitably out in public and could defend themselves against assailants. We're not exactly guns for hire here, ma'am, if you get my drift on that. Understandable. Well, I understand what your needs are. I could maybe uh, hmm, try to contact a few rough and tumble individuals of that sort, if those are the kinds you need. As for somebody who plays your double, I'm not sure. When do you need that? It's going to take a well, bit to whip up, I'm sure. I have immediate need. They need to be going. I will happily write in advance of money and give you uh, advanced resources. I just want a paper trail and public exposure of them going to places, taking cabs, seeing the shows. It's really a plum assignment because they would be constantly in public, constantly dropping my name and pretending to go to fancy restaurants, pretending to be me. All well, expenses paid. Hmm. I can see what I can do. But I need your promise that I won't need to put too many guns on the case to keep them safe. Um, if anyone attacks them, they should summon the police at once. It's a crime. Yes, but I don't want a nice uh, female friend of mine uh, taking a bullet for me, if you know what I mean. Uh, if you are not confident that any of your employees could uh, take upon such an errand, I sympathize and I will find other resources. But, Mr. DeHara, I'm willing to advance a large sum of money. Yeah. Uh, so at this point, I'll say, uh, why don't you go ahead and roll me some mind negotiation to see if this I, is enough for him to go through with this. I will do so. Uh, I'm not sure if I need to roll anything opposing for him. All right. Do do. I'll have you know I, that, that this is extremely important to me. I am determined to convince you. And I will tap my personality. <laughs> that is perfectly fair. Hey, that is a success. I'm also willing I have another ability called Wealth, which I will tap. Remember, I said I would be very generous with the payments. I will 100% let that go ahead and count towards the success then. I will pay enormous retainer, and like I said, it may be dangerous, but it's also um, uh, all expenses uh, until the money runs out. Right, and you can hear him sort of muttering numbers underneath his breath for a bit. He goes, God damn it, I can't pass this up. <sighs> You've been dragging in a lot of heat, Miss Greatstone. I don't know what you're involved with yet, but whatever it is, uh, whatever's I'm... coming your way... I hope I think, you make it through. I think Wrong after game. they have been, uh, um, after they see the fruitlessness of pursuing someone in pu constantly in public, uh, they will finish their endeavors. Uh, myself and Mr. Breakstone are planning to leave uh, the country, which will make this even easier. If you have any correspondence, you may uh, send it to my staff. Duly noted, Miss Greatstone. Great house. Great house. Great house. Blah, blah, ah, kill me. It's okay. Um, <laughs> it's all good. You deal with lots of clients. I'm sure you get lots of names. Uh, uh, I will yes. see that the retainer is sent at once. I will send the money by wire transfer. Wow. <laughs> it was a fantastic future of wireless transfer. No, wired transfer. Wired transfer, yes. <laughs> no, no. Wireless transfer? That is a pipe dream. Uh, it'll never happen. Well, uh, radios. I mean, Tesla's predicting, you know, those... Oh, yes, the future of uh, infinite and uh, completely permeating electricity. Well, remote-controlled torpedoes. They're still they're trying to do remote-controlled torpedoes. That is timely to this period. Well, I can't quite get into that sort of small talk right now, Miss Greathouse. All but right. We're on the case. Make it set. to be done. Uh, and he will conclude his business. Okay, that said, uh, I'm going to go tell James, hey, James, I got to leave. I got to go stalk Claudia Greathouse as she goes around town to make sure no one tries to kill her. Wait, what? 
uh, using my bad, using my past financial resources, I've hired a duplicate to go around town pretending to be Claudia Greathouse. Now I'm going to go stalk her to see if they go to show up and try to kill her. I just stared done that. Um, so, yeah, I'll be checking in. You're welcome to use the house. By the way, if any cultists break in, uh, tell them I'm not here. Okay. Okay. Please leave a message after the tone. Heading out for the night, Miss Greathouse. Uh, yes, I may be gone for an extended period. Until then, uh, please treat Mr. Gunn here with all courtesy. Oh, yeah, so Mr. Gunn, you still have my holdout pistol, right? It's Mr. Green. Mr. Green, sorry. You still have my holdout pistol, yes? Uh, I think so. Okay. I'll reload it. In case it's unloaded. I don't think you actually fired a shot. Uh, use it only in self-defense. Understood. Um, I'll check in later, but now I'm off. I am one with the night. All right, off to the streets after your doppelganger. I'm going to go to the other map and just make a quick uh, slight note for myself here. And he says under his breath, uh, he was hoping to work with less dangerous than houses. <laughs> Unlucky for you, sir. Would you like anything to drink while you stay? Uh, just a, just water. I need to look at these books. All right, so you go ahead and look at these books. What do you have to research books? A D12 in research. Uh, academics, too. All right, so go ahead and give me some mind academics and that research to figure out what all this nonsense gobbledygook is about and if there's anything of value in them. And in case it counts, like, before I left, since I availed my library, you might get a D8 assist bonus from me. Uh, it, absolutely. Uh, there is a nice stock of other books, translations from Latin and other languages, all nice and available for you. So well, let's go ahead and see that roll. Okay, let's see here. One more. Uh, oh yeah, the D8. One, two, three, perfect. Uh, you managed to sort through the books and these are a, uh, number of texts describing a mysterious uh, individual or god named Bunark, a terrifying general, one whose goal is conquest and domination alone. And it's not just the big wars he cares about, he cares about the little ones too. Every conflict and fight is a prayer to him. And among them, to the unbowed one, you find, of course, instructions for carrying out sets of rituals. Uh, they are on screen now. I take all this down. Like, uh, it doesn't interest me, but it'll probably interest everyone else. It'll interest somebody, and of course, it's still in the books themselves. Uh, all right. Uh, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, a quick few seconds break. I'll be right back and we'll continue the action. I mean, it's a trope of the genre that if I want to keep my secret ID, you know, then naturally I can be seen in public with Claudia Greathouse. And so we will know, oh, they can't be the same person. Yeah, work for Superman. Absolutely. You absolutely need to do that. You literally right. will have so to that's... do that where you're... Well, you say you're doppelganger in a public place that way there is absolutely well, no shred of doubt that you're no, not Claudia. You need to be seen with the woman in black. No, I am the woman in black. No, no, I'm saying that it's yeah, easier I mean. for you to be you and somebody to put on a costume than it is for you to put on a costume and make someone else look like Claudia Black. That is true, but um, I, I think it's better... Yeah, I can't... On the other hand, I'm also planning on stalking my doppelganger to see if anyone sneaks up and tries to kill them. 
I'm a right. little worried that they might try to use supernatural energies against her, of which she might have no defense. I feel kind of bad about it, but then again, you know, we got to do something. I, I would feel better about this than them, you know, actually coming and burning my house down or doing something like that. Right. Not rich enough to replace your own house. Plus, if they come... Well, not that rich now. Uh, um, it's an expensive house. Plus, also, if they actually come straight for me, ignoring whoever Claudia Greathouse the doppelganger is, then I'll know they have some sort of supernatural detection means to find me. Good luck finding me, though. I'm supernaturally resistant now. I'm that angry. Well, I mean, you already have somebody that's uh, got supernatural gifts out for you. So, you might just get crossed wires on that one. We'll see. Because you remember a world. the people from the factory saw you as uh, the woman in black, and they might be after you. And who knows if they have uh, any of the <laughs> any of the uh, multiple supernatural talents to f figure out who you were or in where you words, are. While, while I'm out stalking my doppelganger, who might get killed by Sikavik's men, I might get attacked by the servants of Gamigan, who are out for revenge against the woman in black. Right, or worse, something will happen regarding your, any of your stuff, and you won't know which group is after you for the, which specific thing. Well, it's an exciting life that I lead. Hey, it's hard being Batman. I don't know exactly which... Uh, folk, not to say folk hero, which uh, pulp hero... The woman in black is supposed to be. I can't remember. <laughs> we keep joking, Batman, but you're not Batman. Um, I'm probably. I would. The woman in red is, I would say, my most direct inspiration. But that's not a great one to say because the woman in red is not in a lot of. Ah yes, Carmen San Diego. I'd rather see you more like a phantom shadow kind of dude. Like from the from the twenties and the thirties. I don't know. We keep joking that I'm apparently the Phantom. Well, you're. Uh...